Welcome back in our main session. We hope that you enjoyed the breakout session and that they actually provided you some guidance on what to expect this year. And as mentioned before, uh, all sessions are recorded. So if you couldn't join a session you wanted to see, there's also a chance afterwards to rewatch them. So therefore, everything will be available after that as well for you. OK, so now let's move on to the next keynote. And um, I think in the last hour, we realized uh, that we have so many things on the plate and we have so many goals to achieve. But I think it's important uh, to understand that sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes things go even heavily wrong. We have setbacks and we have to cope with that. And I think the most important thing is to stand up again if something goes wrong, to come back stronger and wiser and to learn out of it. And the next guest we're going to have here probably knows best how to deal with these things. And we are very happy that our guest also has some time for your questions. So whenever you have a question to her, just drop it into the chat and we will come back later to it. But now the only question is, who is our guest? She is a world champion, but not only once, but she actually won 11 world championships. She won the Olympics twice. And she definitely proved the world of sports that anything is possible with the right mindset. Today, she's with us. A big applause to German cycling racing legend Christina Vogel. Hello, hello, hello. So, and yet one. Um, it's so good to see you, everyone, digital. But um, first, I want to say my name is Christina Vogel. And because I really love to say that, I am an Olympic double champion, bronze Olympic Games 2, 11 uh, time world champion, six time junior world champion, five time European champion, two times junior world European champion, 23 World Cup titles, and I think 19 times German champion. Sounds good, right? So, um, but I had two blows of fate, and um, I think these moments I want to tell you above all. But the question number one is, how did I start in track cycling career, or how did I start in career as a competing athlete? So, I, I chose the coin. Yes, literally, I chose the coin. So, I was dancer, and a cyclist. And the problem was those both training sessions, yeah, sometimes wasn't at the same time. So sometimes I had to go to cycling, sometimes to dancing, and of course my coaches were can I say pissed off. <laughs> but I was standing in my, my childhood room and I couldn't make a decision. Should I be a dancer or should I be a cyclist? So I flipped the coin. Had cycling or dancing. You know the result? It was dancing. No, it was cycling. And um, this moment changed my life totally. But when I'm telling you from good and crazy moments in my career, I had to tell you one thing about this poster. In my entire school, there was this poster, ET. And I thought, hmm, riding ET to home sounds good, right? So I decided to go into my very first yeah, selecting training program, training session in my hometown. And I thought, yeah, sometimes you just have to guide your, your feelings. You know? Sometimes you just have to, to flow and see what your feelings doing with you. So I love track cycling and I thought it's the right thing for me. But then things are went really, really fast to me. Um, sometimes maybe too fast, but I decided, yes, doing track cycling would be fine, a second would be fine. And then I went the very first time from my hometown, which is Erfurt, to Stuttgart, which is the same way like I did last year from Frankfurt am Main to Tokyo. So it had been a major trip for me, but I went there, Stuttgart, to my very first selecting competition for the national team squad. And I can tell you, I succeed very well. In my very first major competition, I have been directly selected for the national team. So how good is that, huh? 
I think I just did because I loved it. So I love track cycling and I love what I'm doing. I'm just guided by my feelings somehow, you know? And sometimes I think that these not thinking, not overthinking is the critical key element factor for job performance. So, or can we say you create your future today, not tomorrow? Then things gone very fast, you remember. Um, I was selected by the national team. Three years later, I was a six-time junior world champion, two-time European junior champion, and I thought, yeah, from the juniors, go to the adults, go to elite races, and you thought, yeah, maybe I'm ready for kicking some asses there, you know? But sometimes plans now go not that way you thought. And it comes the uh, 20th May of 2009. I know it has been a beautiful spring day. Um, I come back from a good training session and riding downhill and from the another of the next time I woke up in the hospital and I thought, okay, what's going wrong here? Where I am? And I remember that my boyfriend was sitting next to my, my hospital bed and he explained what happened, that a car took my right of way I crashed directly in the last glasses of this minivan. I was lying two days in a coma. And then I gave me a minute just to realize what happened. And I had two totally stupid questions somehow, you know, because sometimes competing athletes are crazy because number question number one has been in which hospital I am. I don't know why, but it was really important for me to know which hospital I am. So where's the place where I'm lying at the moment? And question number two was, when do I get the next bike, my next bike? So yeah, right. I was two days lying in the coma. I broke my five of, five of seven bones here in my hand. I broke the end of my collarbone, I broke one spine, and I'm, yeah, I'm so lucky that I'm, on this time I wasn't paralyzed from, from my chest down because um, I had such a good muscle and um, I have to give that, that penny to my coach that he hustled me through the gym day by day, you know, that I trying to protect myself on the moment where I was throwing through the window. And how crazy is that? On the 20th of May 2009, my life could change totally. Two days later, I woke up from the coma and directly I wanted to have a new bike. And can, can I say, eight months later, I succeed at the World Championships in Copenhagen and the places that I succeed there has been the best places for a German track cycling at least since 20 years. Your future starts today, not tomorrow, right? Or not overthinking, just doing. Um, I didn't want that just because someone stole my right of right the moment, you know, that I can't do both and I'm flying through the window, that he decided about my dreams, about the Olympic Games. So I wanted to be an Olympic champion. I wanted to be a senior world champion, not just a junior. So why you should do this decision for me? This is nine, my accident number one. And 2012, I become the first time Olympic champion in London. And maybe you watch Olympic Games in TV and maybe you have seen the 2nd August of 2012 because um, literally it has been a crazy day because in cycling it is that you competing and directly you, you watch on the timetable and see, oh, okay, second. But a second is good. Silver, silver is fine. 
being at the first time at the Olympic Games, competing there, and yeah, winning a silver medal is great, right? At the Olympic Games, you're coming down from the track and directly go to the press and do this question answer thing, and now you can't breathe because there's nothing in, in your body left because you left everything on the track there, but then um, from counter to count, we say, yeah, it's fine, uh, brand new Olympic silver medals winner, it's fine, but then from color number one, he tapped on my shoulder and was like, hey, Christina, look here on the table. Shine the relegated, you have gold. The thing has been that we succeed so good that we're pushing the pressure so high of other teams that they do mistakes. That we have been the fastest on the day by gaining the rules. Doing things because you love it, right? not overthinking it, right? Doing things because you love it and you want to see it very well, right? From that time, it has been so far for me. Being Olympic champion in 2012, being 11-time world champion, breaking some world records, um, being Olympic champion in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro, maybe you as well have seen the Olympic Games there when you've seen it in 2012, because I have been so fast that yes, I'm losing my saddle. Maybe I've seen the uh, amazing day because at the pro to the finish line, we're doing this track cycling or this cycles as well, these jump to the finish line and maybe see that the athletes are so, yeah, so long, so wide and pushing the bike to the finish line means that in that second, your bike is faster than you with the bike. You're doing this finish line jump, you know, and I did the major finish line jump in my, I think, whole career, because, hey, I want to grab that gold medal too, right? Um, and then it was leading so back on my saddle that I, yeah, literally just losing my saddle. And it sounds kind of funny, right? But it is really dangerous because at the finish line, we are over 60 meters fast and with a cadence of 115 cadence per minute, so. You can't ride your bike standing up, you know, and literally I have no idea how I made it. Just God knows it. But I keep me on my bike. Just 200 meters later after the finish line, I realized, hey, I tried to pedal my bike somehow, but at the end, who won? Did I won my next small medal or not? It seems that sometimes I need these major things, you know, these major historical moments. Um, that's why I wrote the book, by the way. But you remember that I have been Olympic champion twice. I have been on the podium of the world. So you know that when I enter the track side, that the gold medal just is everywhere there where I am. So I was the most seen athlete in the velodrome. I knew that when people are riding against me, that they especially want to just to beat me because they know where Christina is, they are gold medals. So being Olympic champion 2012, being Olympic champion 2012, but the next major thing should be clear, right? Be Olympic champion in 2020 in Tokyo. But you remember how it is with plans. Sometimes life comes through. And I remember the 26th of June, 2018. It has been, again, a really great day. Um, I did a team spirit training effort. That means that the girl in the front, I, in the back, it was in a sl back slipstream. So a slipstream, she went out. and I pushed the last meters to the finish line. And I did it. It has been the last effort of the day. And then I walk up, along the track, and I thought, oh, Craig Christina, this is serious. As long as you are insane, just breathe, breathe, concentrate, and breathe. I was lying on the track, and I have seen people running into to me and how I was seen then running, I knew this is really serious. And in the next second, I had just a pressure on my whole body that I, I thought I have to move and please take all my clothes out. And 
what we psyche do at the first time is that we are wearing our helm off and our really thin and major shoes. So I thought, please, wear my shoes off. And next moment I saw my shoes. My shoes are running back for me. So my friend took my shoes off and I didn't notice that someone was on my body. And that moment I realized, okay, I will never ever walk again. Two days later, I woke up of the coma, lying in hospital again. Again, my boyfriend and a doctor stand next to my bed. And of course, question number one has been, can I walk or not? Maybe it's a problem as an addict that you know your body very well, but I couldn't breathe and I tried to make like this. The question, can I walk or not? You could think that I should be really angry and sad about life and how life is running. I was on the top of the world, just living my dream, doing track cycling and competing very well. And now there came someone staying on a track. I couldn't see him. He was not following the rules and I crashed into him with 16 km per hour. But I think that our feelings are sometimes our decision, that I can say, what the hell, I don't want to lie in hospital, I don't want to have bad feelings, you know? I want to go out, have fun, enjoy, and why should my life st stop now? Why? To be honest, the first two weeks have been the hardest fights in my life. I been paralyzed. I had a trauma in my lungs and it was 50 to 50 that I suffered or not. My chance was 50 to 50. I'm dying or I want to be alive. And that time, all the media things were blocked. That I was the unknown girl lying in the hospital. Nobody knew my name and it gives me time to, you know, to, to rehab, to, to realize who I am, who I am in my chair. And to add on that all my bikes had names and I give my, my wheelchair here the name The Beast, you know? So I started to see what's the limit between me and The Beast, who I want to be after track cycling, after, after cycling. And what I noticed is that somehow I was fast with everything in the hospital, have faster with doing things with me in my chair, maybe like doing this, you know, or you see that I had major steps in the gym. And I asked myself why I'm faster than the others. Of course, I had another muscle thing, you know, um, which I bring to my second life than the others. But what I had something different to the others were that I had this question, never asked myself why I had the crash, why I was in that time in that position. So I realized that these questions had no answer, you know? So I never asked that. And maybe I thought that this first accident gave me power to suffer the second one, to be that strong I am here, you know? And I'm standing here speaking to you and showing that sometimes you have to believe, sometimes you just have to feel and scroll down and realize that today you're starting your tomorrow. Today you create your tomorrow, not tomorrow and tomorrow. That sometimes you, you can decide about your feelings. Do I want to have a good life? Do I want to be have fun, you know, or not? So now I'm doing many things. I am the TV, I wrote the book, you know, doing keynotes like that. Um, I fortified my dream to go to the big games. I've been there for a major German TV channel, ZDF, and I was commentating there for track cycling and showing you how to be paralyzed and being at the Olympic Games, you know, 
how is Tokyo? And that means that sometimes your plans are changing, you know, but it's still up to you to make the best out of it. And this is the thing that I want to give you here today. Maybe you can hear now about my story. This yes, sometimes life can punish you very hard. And sometimes it seems that life is unfair, but it's your life and it's your decision. Thank you. Christina, thank you very much thank for you. being here with us today and also for sharing your very emotional story. Thank you, we really appreciate it. And I think we can mention as well, you did it in English for the first time, right? Yeah, it was my first time. I hope it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was great, actually. So that's really impressive. Uh, so that means you left your comfort zone, right? On purpose. Yeah. And that was yeah. also a strong signal, actually, to do this. Because I think it's already difficult to talk. And if you do it in, even in English, it's probably even more difficult. So Thank you. I've been really respect. nervous. Kind, kind of being here at the Olympic you know, Champion Competition. So, um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. That was very inspiring. That was very impressive. And I think... Sorry for the interruption. No, no, I wish... Look, I was... Uh, please come on stage. I was, uh, Christina, first of all, thank you very much. Thank you. I was super inspired. And um, if you don't mind, I'll ask you a few questions. Of right? course. Uh, it's very uh, seldom do we get champions amongst us to be, uh, to learn from. Um, I mean, it's amazing what you went through, right? Uh, and we in business... We go through a lot of challenges. None of them come even close to the challenges that you went through in your life. And um, sometimes when we face a big challenge or uncertainty or, or, or something that is new, you know, we prepare for it, right? And, and we try to organize ourselves and, and, and prepare and, and, and get into the zone, if you will, to, to confront this business situation, either a big decision or, 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 or some process that you have to go through. Tell us about your preparation as an athlete, right? Because every uh, uh, competition is a preparation. Every, um, you know, training is a preparation. Just tell us a little bit about how do you get focused on what you're trying to achieve and, and how do you work towards that in yeah. order to achieve it? Um, I think that um, at the afterlife of being a competitive athlete that many companies really like us athletes because we have this other drive, you know. But the thing is that if I'm an athlete or a CEO, it doesn't matter. The thing, the topics are the same because um, what I had when I was lying in the hospital, of course, I had these one or two black moments somehow, which I was lying in my bed and thought, oh my God, no, there is a steep, you know, or a step for my favorite restaurant and how can I do this and this, you know, it's like... <laughs> how do I go to the bathroom? Yeah, you know, how do I go to the bathroom? Yeah, driving car, how, how I will ever manage that? Yeah. Or how will I ever, ever be an Olympic champion? And I was saying that you just have to start. It sounds so easy, but when we are trying to changing things, trying to, yeah, find it, find it out the way, you know, just trying it. Before you're not trying, you never know how you can make it, you know, and sometimes you not, you not be successful the first or second time, but if you still keep and keep, keep things running and believe in yourself, you can do it. And of course, um, it's not always that I have a good training session that I always thought, yeah, tomorrow Olympic Games, pff, easily, you know, just doing that, throwing the medal here out of my, you know, out of my arms. So, um, of course, every day is hard work, but just keep on rolling it and just go ahead. Just keep going. Out, just yeah. keep going. And and another question I have is, um, you know, when you were going through these injuries and recoveries, yeah. right? Uh, just talking about business for a second. A lot of times, me, difficult situation, I start feeling sorry for myself. Uh, you know, it's unfair. Uh, it was really unlucky or people are against me or I don't have all the tools, you know. How, how do you motivate yourself? How do you find that I just got to keep going? Where, where do you find it? Is it inside of you? Do you take inspiration from others? How do you go through that? I believe that um, these things come from, yeah, my mama kind of and what you, uh, all the moments you, you enjoyed in your life, you know, and I have... Every time, just a sentence in my mind, which, yeah, great people tell to me, you know. And it is like, 
how someone could tell like can't do this, you know? So, um, and I saw the first time when I was lying in the hospital, I had these one of these bad moments. I saw someone who was riding a monster half pipe in a wheelchair. So it was an eight meter high monster half pipe. He drive down and did an salto. I don't know the, the English like word. 360? 360 over, I think, two or three monster trucks. Wow. Sitting in a wheelchair. And I thought, what the fuck he is doing there? He's sitting in a wheelchair and jumping from an eight meter half pipe. So. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm do it. But now I had to promise my mama that never ever. But I did a half pipe just one and a half meter high. It's, it's okay for the starting. Yep. Um, but. What I want to say that is, um, dream big is okay, and sometimes we, it's okay to dream bigger than you ever ever made it. But um, it ke does keep us running and going, you know. So maybe this monster half pipe is a thing that ma maybe someday, but um, it gives me my life back and my life, what I wanted to do, you know, because dreaming about being Olympic champion, dreaming about being a world record holder, or dreaming about doing my life by my own, um, or jumping out of the plane and doing this, you know, this, this jumping, or doing months of pipe. So no one, nobody can tell you what you can do and not. This is only I am who can answer that question. That's great. You know, so. That's great, Christina. That's the really inspiring. Last question, I promise. And I have plenty, and I, and I think Folks, and you know, those are the folks that dialed into our live stream, and they you, you can see the smiles and yeah. and all of the that that's the reactions. But let, let me ask you a last question. Um, we were talking earlier about speed. I mean, we we are a technology company in the middle of this very fast-moving yeah. environment. I mean, everything is different every day, and we talk about agility and adjustments and not being stuck and not being afraid. Actually, that look today we have a plan. And we have a strategy, but you know, tomorrow <laughs> we may have to change it, and we have to be go, get, get on with it. Is that something you face as well as an athlete? Of course, um, there's a spelling, and I'm really bad in spellings in German spellings. But it seems that when you're stopping to uh, trying to be better day by day, you're losing. So the first day you say I'm good enough, you will lose. So. Um, Every day I had to yeah, kick my ass. Every day I had to push me forward, bring me to the limits. And of course I could say I am 11 time world champion. So I'm done. Yeah, I'm it's done. good enough. But of course not. You just want to you know, give you succeed that um, what you're doing is right. And you, you're very good in that, you know. But it means that every day is hard work. And yeah, you can't settle down. Yeah. That's great. Look, that, that's that's really what we were talking about earlier. Well, look, I want to thank you. I have something to give you. Just one second. Oh, <laughs> I love presents. We already done. We also want to give our colleagues the chance to ask some questions. Ah, okay, or okay, at then least I wait. Then have I wait. a look <laughs> at what they're saying because I can only talk for me. But to be honest, I'm speechless because you're such a strong woman. Thank you. And your mindset and your positivity, I think we can learn a lot from that. But let's see what our colleagues are saying. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, everybody is to so inspired by you. You see the hearts, right, going <laughs> up and down. Uh, yeah, it's so good. Should, you should come over later and read it for yourself because I can't read everything. It's just uh, so inspiring, goosebumps. What a, what a strong, inspiring woman you are. Um, the feedback is amazing, and it's really true. Thank you so much. There's actually from um, actually one of our young emerging women is a question um, that I wanted to ask you. Um, Christina, how do you practice your amazing resilience? Is it born or how you can train it maybe? Can you give some advice? I think both. Um, maybe it's things my mama gave me and I think maybe it's 20% maybe I think. And the rest is what you learn and teach you day by day. It's these moments you you're fighting through, you know, it's the persons you you learn, get to know day by day. So um listen to what they're talking about you. And I think um sometimes we uh, yeah a bit too shy that we had to believe in ourselves. So to be honest, I never never walk up, yeah some someday I will have a spinal cord injury and of course I can make it. That would be a lie, you know. Um but then I just started to to go through and start and day by day to uh, to create my new life and now here I am, you know. So um yeah, sometimes the world looks too big, but just 
starting and then you will see how it goes. I think that's the, maybe it's the key thing about my resilience. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of um, kudos here in the chat. And I wanted to share one. Um, it's not a question, it's just a comment that I really liked um, as a result from your, from your keynote. Um, she says, your challenge is to you. Every day a better you should emerge. Yeah. I love that saying. That is great. That is good. Yes. Really good. I Any other questions or? No. No? Well, Christina. Presents are good. Look, <laughs> I, I will walk you to this. It's a little chocolates. Oh, yeah. And thank flowers you. that I will take with you. But look, thank you, thank you so much. It's, it's, it's so inspiring uh, to have somebody like you in the world to use it as, a, as an example for us. In, in not just in business. Business is something we just do, right? But in life. Thank you. Right, and how to look for it. So thank you for that. And all well, the best to you. Thank you for having me. Enjoy your day. I will take the flowers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Christina.